uh, let me start out by thanking the organizers of this uh, festival for asking me to give a talk here and for so all of you for coming. Uh, I want to, I've been asked to uh, start out this festival by, by talking about the science, technology, more broadly. So I picked a topic called the scientific tradition and uh, technology development. As a physicist, I would like to use physics as an example to talk about that. So uh, there's a great physicist uh, with the name of Lev Landau. Landau liked to uh, make commentaries of things. So he ranked the physicists among their contributions, so in logarithmic scale. Uh, means that if your ranking differ by one, in his view, your contribution to physics differs by a factor of 10. So, on top of his ranking, the smaller the numbers, the better. Landau uh, ranks Isaac Newton because Newton is the one who sets the framework of scientific. In particular, he solved the so-called the Kepler problem. Newton links the things which we use to think where God lives in the stars and things that happened here on Earth, use the laws of gravity. Other than Newton, uh, Langdow also put Einstein, and he's slightly below Newton, and of course, that's the space and time. And today, we know that one of the great triumphs of human mind is the detection of the gravitational wave. It's an amazing phenomenon because it's something that happened a billion years ago in a galaxy that far away of stones, uh, of two black holes collide. It takes the waves about a billion years, long before Earth has formed, to travel to here and being detected. Okay. So you, can, you may wonder where Langdell put himself. Okay. So he gave himself a ranking of 2.5. Okay. After he won a Nobel Prize and being recognized as sort of the intellectual leader of the former Soviet Union, and he feels that he deserves a promotion, so he put himself from one 2.5 to two. But among the Landau's list of other great physicists, and he is the one I want to talk about more today, that's Owen Schrodinger. Okay. There's five or six names, including Planck, Dirac, Heisenberg, and others, and Landau. In Landau's list, I want to talk about Schrodinger. Um, here's Erwin Schrodinger. The, in physics, there's a famous equation called the Schrodinger equation. You can think about all the signs of the things around us derived from the solution of Schrodinger. And he's one of the few great physicists who has contributed to many fields of science. His contribution to physics continues, as you will see, for example, in a lot of discussions of quantum computing. And of course, in the theoretical physics, the, fee, the Schrodinger equation is still the starting point of the many field theory. Another contribution you can think about the impact of Schrodinger is chemistry. As you know, chemistry, the great thing is that the most significant part of chemistry, of course, is the understanding of how the elements are listed together and is the periodic table. If you were to solve the Schrodinger equation in the simplest, simplest potential under simple boundary condition, you immediately can see why the periodic potential behaves the way it is. Okay, so it's related to two important quantum numbers of the solution of the Schrodinger's equation. Schrodinger is also one of the great physicists who has impacted biology. Okay, 
he wrote a book called What is Life? In that book, he described the genetic code from a very general thermodynamic argument. The genetic code must be a big molecule. Okay. At the time, most of the biologists are thinking this is ridiculous. And uh, however, his idea influenced some of the brilliant young biologists that including the three who discovered the DNA, James Watson and Francis Crick, give tremendous credit to Heisenberg and his idea. And they describe his ideas as a thunder in a dark sea, let the person seeing the continent ahead. Okay. Today, Schrodinger still impacted us. And you can see I'm now Trans transitioning to the long scientific tradition to technology. And as you know, one of the great triumphs here we call the Silicon Valley, you can think about the last 60 years, the advance we make in technology can be summarized by purification and the control of one property of one material namely the conductivity of silicon. However, that was inspired mostly by understanding the quantum nature of the silicon's band structure. If you notice on the right-hand side, the three person discovered the transistor, John Barding, Bill Shockley, and John Braddon, two of them were theorists. Okay, they have a deep understanding of the quantum, quantum nature of that. The understanding of the quantum band structure gives you a sense what is so-called electron and what is so-called hole, which form the foundation of the PN junction today, and that's the foundation for the silicon devices. Looking ahead, okay, I think if you read some general literature, you learn something about so-called the Schrodinger's cat. Okay. That is the idea Schrodinger used to argue with the Copenhagen School of Thought. And basically is to say that in a quantum world, you could have a superposition of two states. In this case, you are having a state of simultaneously being a living cat and dead cat. And that symbolized the quantum superposition of that. Of course, the advances derived from that really has changed our life. And this is the Nobel Prize case for the LED, and that has changed a lot of our life. And the quantum science and understanding of that also trans um, transform in other ways, like the photovoltaic effect, the lasers, and optical communication, and hopefully someday also quantum communication. What I've been asked to talk about scientific tradition, I want to remind everyone that uh, we tend to focus on technology, but it takes a long time to go from technology, uh, from science to technology. Even when the transistor was invented, it takes seven decades to go from where it was at the Bell Laboratory to where we are today. Okay. I think the road is very far here. On the other hand, if you are successful, the impact can be tremendous. Okay. Now I want to also want to talk about the, in a scientific research, there's also an aspect of unpredictable outcome. In other words, you really don't know what will be the results of research. If you know the results, you probably are not doing very forefront and original research. Let me give you one example. That's one of the things we've been working on. Chevron Corporation accidentally discovered a large amount of small diamond molecules, so called the nanodiamonds, in petroleum, in oil. Okay. 
So they thought this might be a very interesting, and one would want to explore this very interesting nano diamond from oil. And we thought this might give a very interesting composite electronic properties. It didn't happen. We hoped to find superconductivity in those materials. It didn't happen. On the other hand, the idea has inspired, okay, has inspired a lot of new thinking. One of them is a high temperature solar cell. That's the thesis work of Jerry Svit and when he was doing a PhD with me and um, Nick Malash. And this is interesting because this might allow to integrate two disconnected solar energy technology, namely the thermal solar and the photovoltaics. Now they are completely di disconnected because we don't have a very good storage and we don't have a, a solar cells that can perform at a very high temperature. Okay. Then Jared, uh, after PhD at Stanford, he started a company, and he was originally thinking maybe he'll push this forward, but a new idea came, and the idea he used uh, is try to use this technology now to make a drone fly longer. As you know, that a drone can do many of the things to increase efficiency, like uh, uh, survey the agricultural field, traffic control, and all that. But one of the problems is that the battery only allows them to fly 20 minutes. But with this new technology, they think they can inspire to have the drones fly, commercial small drones fly, for example, an hour and a half. That's a huge difference between uh, 20 minutes and that. That will greatly expand the application of that. This is the web page at the, the is actually a White House blog by, uh, uh, by Jerry on this. So I want to also, this is the second aspect of that is one is the scientific tradition takes a long time to build. The second is sometimes when you do research, you don't necessarily know where the research will take you. Here's another example. Now, it's, it's also interesting, each subfield of science can develop in their own way, and they seemingly unconnected. But at an important and a critical point, suddenly they meet each other, and that meeting can create a lot of opportunity and, and a lot of interest. Here I'm giving you two, two subfields. One is, of course, superconductivity, and is represented by the levitation on the left-hand side. It's a fascinating field of physics, actually. There's a lot of success and progresses, and 19 individuals won Nobel Prizes for their contribution in the field of superconductivity. The right-hand side is, again, the Schrodinger's cat, and it represents the progresses in fundamental quantum physics and the understanding of the superposition. The marriage of these two development leads to what we today have, namely the possibility of quantum computing. Not far from here today, uh, in Google campus, I guess uh, it's about five miles from here, and they are trying to achieve so-called quantum supremacy. It's an idealized test experiment. They're hoping to use 72 devices okay, to do a before any uh, signal correction to do a computation. That will be performing better. That will perform better than any of the supercomputers as you know, the best supercomputers use millions of chips. Each chip contains billions of devices. But with 72, Google hopes to achieve that performance. Again, you can see this is 70 or 80 years of different tradition of science. But when they meet, they may potentially have a very disruptive uh, impact on that. So the second example, on the 
left-hand side, it's a hot topic these days in, in some of the investment uh, community. I think there's one session on the blockchain technology. Okay. On the right-hand side is your daily coffee. Okay. You may wonder, well, what is the blockchain technology and your daily coffee has to do? Of course, you drink coffee so while you try to, to think about it. It turns out the technology of the crypto cryptographic hash, namely the way you write the codes of that, can be physically visualized by the same kind of technology of the chaotic mixing, okay? They, they can have the same impact in the sense that they can start out, if your initial condition, the chaos is a field, if your initial condition differs by tiny bit, your final outcome is completely different. Okay. On the high, other hand, if you have the exact same condition input, your final outcome will also be exactly the same. Therefore, it's very difficult to tra trace back from your final pattern to where your initial condition is. On the other hand, if you would have the same initial condition, then they will be the same. It, again, that's interesting because from a scientific point of view, it's a very different branches of science they also begin to meet. And this actually is a paper published this month in the Proceedings of National Academy. So I want to say all this is to say that there's a long scientific tradition. You need the, there's a lot of uncertainty in research. However, if you're persistent, something very important and interesting can happen. Also, there's a tremendous opportunity when you have two disciplines and when they finally come together in a often and unanticipated way, okay? And they can produce disruptions. The interface of disciplines of science often is the place where you, as investors, you should look at it because they are the ones where you could have a lot of potential for disruption. Okay, now this, there's a third component. The, the scientific and technology enterprise and the impact of our society is a long ch uh, uh, value chain, okay? And however, if you only have a science and technology, if the technology is not natural to science, uh, uh, natural to the market and does not fit market, then that does not work. Therefore, you also have to connect that to the market and the need of the society. The market usually is connected to the need of the society. That's where you would. For example, the laser technology development, okay, and, and that leads to LiDAR, which is a very important sensor for autonomous driving. You can see the autonomous driving is another field where you could see it's a marriage and a convergence of technology in computer vision, big data, and great sensor technologies such as the LiDAR. Okay. So this actually is one of, one of the companies now we have invested in uh, uh, called a Septon. It's a, very exciting LiDAR company uh, have achieved tr tremendous precision in this way. The second example I want to talk about is, again, it's at the boundary of two different fields. It's the boundary of magnetic sensor. That's the same technology of the giant magneto resistance living in your laptop, and that's the one who leads to the Nobel Prize and also the uh, development of medicine and medical application. This sensor of these two, this fusion of these two technology allow the possibility for very high precision and high reliability early cancer, lung cancer detection with fidelity at the level of 
sensitivity and also fidelity both reaching the percentage about 90%. Okay, that's uh, uh, for people familiar with this field. That's a pretty very impressive per performance. Again, that's the opportunity where you see different branches of science come together, which can address the social need. Anyway, so in summary, I've been asked to give a talk, talk about scientific tradition at the broader sense and their impact to the society. I think you wanted to take a longer view, um, at least as a society, because it takes a very long time. Sometimes the research does not necessarily produce the expected results. In fact, quite often that's the case because nature is very clever. Nature often has its own way to invent things that's beyond the simple human imagination. And the opportunities often rises in the places where different branches of science come together in an amazing way to addressing really important market needs. So let me start here. Thank you very much. Thank you.